yet again am involved in another controversial video and situation and i'm really interested to know what you think of this one what's up guys i'm chris doughty aka Daltonator, and we're at bathurst for a daily race c there is no strategy tire wear times one fuel times one pretty boring but one thing i'll give pd credit for we've got a night to day transition race and this is actually quite enjoyable bathurst is probably one of the most difficult tracks in gran turismo 7 and let's just up that difficulty factor by doing it at night time going across the mountain at night time is incredibly difficult and we're going to get underway now we lined up p5 in this race and we're in the subaru wrx the beetle is also a really strong car for this race and with using it last week i just don't like it i'm, I'm not going to use it so we're in the subaru and putting in fifth place getting on the flashes without the lights in this race you cannot see a single thing and you can also kind of feel and see the lights of the car behind you you can feel the pressure when you can see their lights casting a shadow from your car as you can see right now we're going into the mountain section i can see the lights from the car behind putting me under pressure I'm trying everything I can to avoid this and just try and look forwards and race forwards as we always try and do but you cannot get out of the back of your head that the car behind is just right on your back bumper over the mountain for the first time and we're looking for our turning points, clipping points and acceleration points and it's difficult to spot them uh, through this series of corners here. That left hander is one of the most difficult corners on the track and then we go down through the mountain. I think this is called the skyline. Uh, any Bathurst uh, resident experts please correct me if I'm wrong but uh, we're going to float through here quite nicely uh, there's a bit of a gap to the cars ahead because we got caught on the corner to start our race I'm going to get on the brakes now and just run a little bit wide into the Falcon tyre banners and really lose touch with the cars ahead luckily for us the driver behind has also had an issue over the mountain which leaves us uh, safe from behind down the long Bathurst back straight now and looking right into the distance we can see two drivers ahead starting to battle and that could play into my favour as we go into the, through the kink now down the, on the brakes down to second gear for this chicane and the drivers are definitely going side by side that's going to be costing them quite a bit of time uh, and they're really starting to come back now so that is costing a significant amount of time uh, German driver Maverick versus the British driver and he's going to get a Who's going to get the run now? Are we going to look to the inside into this first corner? Uh, the sun is starting to come up, but not quite light yet. We're going to back off these guys, give them a lot of space. And a bit of contact there going into the corner. We can't quite get to the inside. We're going to run out of room on the inside of the track and have to back out that one. Maverick with a two-second penalty. That is a significant penalty to serve, possibly for that contact into the braking zone. I need to try and get on the back of Maverick as quickly as possible to not try and lose touch with the driver ahead in third place. The difficulty is with the time of day, we can barely see a thing. Our lights aren't shining beyond his car and we're finding it very difficult to spot Apex's braking points and turning points. And we're gonna slide into the inside there, but yeah, again, the darkness is, is brilliant to driving. Uh, Bathurst had a nighttime option in Gran Turismo Sport, but in Gran Turismo 7 with the dynamic time, the sun will come up as we start to get to lap two or three and uh, Maverick's just starting to gap us through the mountain section now. Uh, my confidence through these series of corners just wasn't there. I was lacking my turning points uh, down the mountain. I wasn't too bad, but it's that series of left-handers where I was losing a huge amount of time. And it looks like the guy in third place is really starting to gap us, which is a bit difficult. It also looks like the driver behind Turbo Hulk has started to catch the back of us as well so again we've got the lights shining from behind giving us that pressure down the back straight now for the second time uh, maverick will be serving his penalty i'm going to avoid him the ghosting can be a bit questionable so we're going to try and pass him completely to the side and turbo hulk now is he going to be in striking distance into the braking zone of this chicane i think we're going to be good we're going to get the brakes as late as we can and try and flow through here and then try and latch onto the back of the driver in third place. This race has been pretty eventful so far. The darkness on the track, it really brings a new element to the track. I really, really love it. If we can throw in some dynamic weather in future daily races, that would be absolutely perfect, PD. Please, please, let's hear some of that. 
Uh, so finishing lap number two, starting lap number three, yellow flags are out for, let's see, it's a car has dropped it. The Portuguese driver has dropped it coming out of turn one. That's promoted us to third place. We've not really got great pace, but we are keeping it reasonably consistent. And I think that is paying dividends for us. Skipping forward to the end of lap number three and the sun is starting to rise. The sky is getting lighter. The track just has a lot more definition to it. We can see what's going on now. The lights are still on. We still need a bit of lights, but we can actually see where we're going. And what's happening now is we are just, oh, a big swaz moment from the driver in second place. And he's not really going to suffer too much from that. Must have caught that incredibly well. Uh, but we are looking to go forwards now. Skipping forward to the end of lap number four. And yellow flags are out again. Could this be another incident ahead? It's for sure an incident, but is it, is it a back marker? It, it, it's the leader. The leader's dropped it on the exit of the final corner. We're up to second. And are we in with a shot of the win here, guys? I I don't know. I qualified just behind the guy who's in the lead right now. And we know the dangers of the mountain. Skipping forwards again. End of lap number five. Um, we're going to try and get across the line. Uh, the leader goes across the line in two minutes, one. Point nine. That's a fantastic lap time. We can only do a two minutes 3.2. So somehow the leader has pulled an absolute blinder out of the bag. And I think we're in a battle now, a race for second place. In third place right now is the guy who started on pole with a significant speed advantage to most of the people in the race. He's going to be fighting back for us now. Can we hold on to this one? Lap number nine, across the mountain now. Look at the sun rising over the circuit as we come down through Skyline. And we are we're on a personal best sector, but we are under a significant threat from the driver behind. He's really closed in now. And we've got to try and defend this one for another half, one and a half laps maybe. Uh, but it's going to be tough to defend from this one. That driver in the Beetle is going to get a great corner exit. And we are for sure under threat here. I think we're going to have to go defensive to stop this one. The defensive line for me will be on the left side of the track to get the inside for the chicane. Driver behind is going to look to the inside, I'm pretty sure, for the kink, which gives him the outside for the chicane alongside, as expected, into the braking zone. We break reasonably late. He's gone to the outside. We're going to squeeze to the curb and contact on exit the apex. And oh, he's completely lost the car. We're going to run a little bit wide on the gravel there. And wow, what, what was that? Let's take another look at that one from my cockpit camera. And we're turning in, we get squeezed to the apex and we just bump the apex and just go a little bit wide. Let, let me know what you think in the comments below, guys. Was, was I at fault there? Let's look again from the chase camera angle. And he's ahead of me in the braking zone. I tried to stay tight, but I just ran wide. Did he squeeze me to the curb? Let, let's, let's look at it again from his view now he's later than me on the brakes he's running around the outside does he leave enough room there let's check out the reverse angle of that same corner and wow guys honestly let me know i don't know i i'm not sure at the time it happened it felt like i didn't have enough room on the inside i had to take the curb which bounced me and then bounced me into him i considered a racing incident at the time and i continued on with the race and I managed to stay ahead of the hard charging German in third place and bring it home in second. I'm always interested to know your feedback, comments and anything. I want to improve as a driver in every race I do. Did I deserve that second place or was that a cheeky move on not giving the place back after the contact? 60,000 for that? One star marathon? Come on. Where's that tomahawk?